A 28-year-old Nigerian has single-handedly built a 1.5 kVA pure sine wave inverter, which can be upgraded to 100 kVA. The electrical electronics graduate says his invention is an improvement on what presently obtains in the country as it makes inverter batteries charge faster and last longer while protecting them from possible electrical surge as well as lightning strike. Lara Afalaya reports. 28-year-old Dolakwa Dijuko is a graduate of electrical electronics engineering. He built this 1.5 kVA inverter from start to finish. He tells me this move is inspired by his creative abilities alongside other incidents that shaped his mindset. Growing up, um, my parents will always make me go and stand with every bricklayer that comes to the house, every um, electrician that comes to the house, everybody. So you start to see how things work. You start to start to fascinate because. For instance, you see an inverter like this, you are just seeing the, the end product, you are not really seeing what's inside. So when you see people doing, working in those fields, you start to see them break it down, then you start to get interested, okay, this is the circuit board, this is this and that. So when I was going to school and um, university, it was, it was in, with that mindset that we we're going to just do practical things, because I like to do practical things. I'm not going to memorizing, my memory is terrible. The journey towards producing this inverter began after the Lapua acquired necessary skills during his national youth service, after which he began in butter installation services in homes and offices. That experience exposed him to the flaws imported in butters have in relation to the Nigerian electricity context, which he is now trying to address with his invention. We import probably 99.9% .9 of the inverters that we use in Nigeria, and they are mass produced. There's no they are not taking into um, consideration some of the issues that we face in Nigeria. Um, sometimes now, in my house for instance, the voltage could drop very low and it means that my battery will not charge for that period. And so I'll be forced to use this inverter. That was one issue that I want to address. Then the second issue that I wanted to address is the issue of how upgrade. When, for instance, you don't have money, you want to, you want to do an installation now. And then you only have money to do, say, 1.5 kV system, just to power your lights, your fan, your TV, you know, just to be comfortable. You do that. But later on, when you want to upgrade, say you want to put your freezer on it, and you would have to discard the old inverter you have and buy a bigger one. So we also looked at that issue too, to say, let's have a system that is easily upgradable. So when you want to upgrade next time, you just get another inverter and then you add to it. Then the third issue was also the charging there's also a charging issue. There is a reason why um, dry cell batteries fail in Nigeria, and it's because of this um, poor charging regulation thing. You just charge batteries from start to finish, so after six to eight months, you realize that your battery lifespan has already dropped. So these are the issues that we really want to address. 60% of the inverter's spare parts are locally sourced, and Dolapo gives an illustration of how it works. This is the battery, this is the inverter. These are the cables that are connecting the battery to the inverter. This can power lights, it can power your fan, it can power your TV. The casing for the inverter was well, made in Nigeria. The entire thing was made in Nigeria. The transformer is made in Nigeria. It's only the things that we absolutely cannot get in Nigeria that we are importing. The cables were sourced from Nigerian cable companies too. This young man has tried sourcing funds to move his project beyond the prototype phase to commercial production. But this requires a lot of money which he doesn't have. He is already seeking support from financial institutions, but has yet to make any headway. As it is now, I've been thinking about it since I started this, and right now I still don't have an answer as to which agency I can't. I could have met to make my life easier while developing this. I had to spend a lot of the money I was making on the solar installations and all that. And again, this is coming from abroad and you are, you are developing, you are prototyping. You are going to make mistakes here and there, and once you burn something, it's going to be expensive to replace. You order, you will pay for shipping from abroad, you have to source Forex. The Lapa's parents have been his strong pillar of support through the years. His father, who is his top fan, tells me he ensured his son was well educated to help him better achieve his career aspirations. He had a good teacher, you know, from the beginning. He had a good math teacher outside school. So that was the foundation that he got. And then later, he went to school, he went to this, he went to that. 
He went to several schools because each time I noticed something deficient in the school, I changed the school. At first he said he wanted to be an aeronautic engineer. Uh, I started on that path. But you know, it's, 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 it's a fairly expensive course. Uh, so, and then they said they have to do first degree in engineering before they now go to proceed and go and do all that. By the end of it, he decided that he uh, was going to go along with this. And this is where we are today. I'm very happy and very proud of him. Dolako shares his thoughts on efforts being made by the authorities to power up the country using foreign expertise. He says the abilities of young people like him, if harnessed by government, could give consumers even greater satisfaction in the power sector. Um, there's this um, project that the federal government is doing, I think, um, they're acquiring homes in the north. And um, I'm well aware at least um, six, seven years ago, they were working with a Canadian company to produce inverters for them and to set it up in the north. I mean, this is what we can do here. With this technology, we can do that. You don't have to go to Canada again. So if we have that kind of, that kind of, um, you don't even need to give us money. Just give us that project and give us an advance. And then we will handle it, we will take it. This view is seconded by his father. If we have young Nigerians who are doing this, we reduce our level of importation. We stop exporting jobs. Because right now what we do is export jobs. People, the more we export, the more they create, we create jobs in those countries. But if we have young Nigerians who are doing this, then we are creating jobs at home. People have something to do. And then this syndrome of young people being forced to emigrate, to leave their own country, will no longer be there. Dolapo has very big plans for his invention and hopes they one day become reality. The vision is to, is to, is to build a company that people can refer to as the African Tesla. That really is the vision. Because with this technology, we can start talking about um, electric vehicles, we can start talking about even assembling solar panels and all that. It's, it's, it, if, if you can see the vision, it, it's really pretty. It took Dola for six years to come up with this prototype inverter, and the journey not only took time, but cost him a lot in terms of funding, which he sourced from his parents and personal savings. And despite several challenges that confront him in this process, this young man says he is not ready to give up on his dream of becoming a household name in the Nigerian power sector, lighting up cities and homes with his indigenous innovation. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja.